In this video, how to add HDMI smartphone mirroring to your vehicle. You can go into any feature, watch any movie, you'll just request. You will have to just use the Wi-Fi of your car or Wi-Fi of your phone. You can connect Roku stick, uh, Amazon Fire Stick. You can basically connect any device that you want and it will work. Click here and you're gonna enter Android Auto. This is Android Auto home screen. So if you connect any Android Auto, this is gonna be a home screen. You got five main buttons here. First button is your navigation, Waze or Google Maps. You press on the navigation, this is your Google Maps. You got all your applications. Pressing either of the corner, you can switch through the pages of applications. Land Rover, Range Rover, full size HSE, years 2005 to 2009. All NavTool products are 100% designed and manufactured in the USA. Please support American Jobs. NavTool, established in 2002. This interface does not replace factory radio or factory screen. This interface enhances the factory screen with features like Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, HDMI mirroring, and cameras. All factory features work the same as before. This interface is see-through, meaning the vehicle does not detect that the interface is installed in the car. This is a two-part video. Part 1, product demonstration. Part 2, product installation. This is a Range Rover demo. This is compatible with all Range Rovers, Sport, and full size. To activate, it can work on cars with or without navigation. So even if your car doesn't have navigation, navigation is broken, or you don't even want to have your navigation anymore, you can completely disconnect it and just use this interface. To activate, press this button. It's an F button. It could have the circle to enter the navigation, just like this. If you have this icon on the button, or this would be the button. You press and hold for a few seconds and you're going to enter the interface. Inside the interface, you find four cameras. If your vehicle is not equipped with a rear view camera, you can add a rear view camera. If your vehicle is equipped with a rear view camera, factory rear view camera will work as before. If you choose to add a front camera, you have an option to add a front camera. When you put the car in reverse, rear camera will come on the screen. When you're going to put the car in drive, front camera will stay on the screen up to 10 miles an hour. You can also use front camera while driving. So if you decided to drive and watch your front camera by pressing this button, you'll be able to see the camera. We just have a random camera here for test purposes. Pressing in the middle of the screen will exit out. You have left and right camera option. Those are lane watch cameras. These cameras in this particular vehicle do not work with turn signals, but if you choose to add left and right, Turn signal cameras by pressing left camera, you will see your left language camera and you can switch to right camera. You can also quickly switch through the cameras here. So if you want to watch any of those cameras while driving, you have this ability or press in the middle of the screen to exit. You have HDMI input and you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto input. HDMI input, you can connect one of the following devices. NavTool wireless smartphone mirroring device. Roku Premiere, Roku Streaming Stick, Roku Streaming Stick Plus, Roku Express, Google Chromecast, Google Chromecast Ultra, Apple HDMI, Apple TV 4K, Fire TV Stick, regular or 4K, Screen Beam Mini 2, and J5 Create USB Type-C to HDMI connection. For this demo, we have chose to connect Apple TV, but you can connect any other device to HDMI. When you press HDMI, Apple TV will appear on the screen. We have our Apple TV here. Give it a second and it will appear. It was off, now we're going to turn around with the remote control. There we go, we got our Apple TV connected. Now, if you have Apple TV installed in a car and you have this remote, Apple TV can be hidden anywhere and using the remote, you can go into any feature, watch any movie you'll just request. You will have to just use the Wi-Fi of your car or Wi-Fi of your phone. You can connect Roku Stick, uh, Amazon Fire Stick. You can basically connect any device that you want and it will work. To exit from HDMI, just press anywhere on the screen and it's going to exit out. Android Auto Demo. Click here and you're going to enter Android Auto. This is Android Auto home screen. So if you connect any Android Auto, this is going to be a home screen. You got five main buttons here. 
first button is your navigation Waze or Google Maps you press on the navigation this is your Google Maps you can change from Google Maps into Waze click on Waze Waze app is going to open up here you have your reports just like on your phone you can report police traffic crash map issues hazard camera so you can press on the police and report so this is just like original that would come in any car to get out back into home click here keep in mind Android Auto you never have to worry about updating it only updates inside your phone when update is ready it's going to display here when the new app is available it's going to display here this is your ways now you can switch between Waze and Google Maps because those are the only two supported by Android Auto this is your phone calls keep in mind phone calls are only supported in vehicles with Bluetooth unlike Apple CarPlay Android Auto can only work for calls with the Bluetooth that's how Android Auto works in any car if your car does not have Bluetooth you will not be able to use this for calls or you will have to install a Bluetooth into your car this is again your home button you can add some home apps this is your audio apps here you have all the available audio application this is TuneIn radio if you want to switch to a different app just press here and it's going to give you a list of available apps we pre-installed Amazon music Google Play music Spotify and TuneIn radio go into TuneIn radio you got the menu over here all just like factory control with a touch screen you got up and down if you want to exit from the Android Auto you press here and press return and you can enter your main menu if you have connected something to HDMI you can go back to your HDMI to exit you go here and then you can re-enter back right into your Android Auto keep in mind one thing about Android Auto Android Auto is identical in every car in the world doesn't matter what car you connected to on top right here you have your Google voice so you have your assistant you can say anything when installing the microphone in the ceiling we have a small concealed microphone and you can say anything navigate to or find the local pizzeria and it's going to find for you you got your signal strength battery and basically any compatible application will appear here so here you will have choice of navigation apps here you will have choice of audio apps now we're going to demo Apple CarPlay connect your iPhone Apple CarPlay will be connected keep in mind Apple CarPlay lives only inside your phone and inside your phone forever you never have to worry about updates all updates happen inside your iPhone this is real Apple CarPlay you got all your applications pressing either of the corner you can switch through the pages of applications and pressing here will go back or you can just press home to go to the home page to get out of the CarPlay press this button it gets out to get back in you go in here you can also rearrange your applications by going into settings of your iPhone. In your phone, go into settings. In settings, you go into general. In general, you go into CarPlay. And in the CarPlay, you go into the CarPlay. This is your application. Let's say I want to move my ways from the back all the way to the front. Watch the screen. I'm going to place it instead of messages. I'm going to take my ways and I'm going to move it. And I want to move it to the first page so it's going to be next to the um, next to the maps application uh, all right right there watch I'm placing now watch the screen right there we got the ways so that's it so we have all the applications on the screen full touch screen so we got regular maps we got now playing so whatever on tuner radio is playing keep in mind that your radio has to be in aux mode and interface connect to your aux and you can press play standing here no standing there you can go 30 seconds back this building you can no pause you can play ground no standing here you got your three most recent applications you got your phone calls you got your um, home button here and then you can select your favorite three applications so you can switch to ways this is your maps you got your reports over here you can do police accident traffic hazard so if you want to report an accident report is being sent you can go back into your tuner radio local radio you can change you know to anything you want you got your up and down arrows here you got your phone calling you go into your phone and you can dial the number let's say we're gonna dial two one two five 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 one two one two oops let's delete that 
one two all right and you can call the number and you can disconnect you got your contacts you got your voicemail and then you got a bunch of applications so any application that is available for that supports by Google uh, by uh, Apple CarPlay you can install so we got all these applications that are currently supported and whatever applications supported once you install them they immediately appear here you don't have to do anything so we got the CGIC offline navigation we got whatsapp and zoom and then we also have Google Maps of course we got genius maps mixcloud the list goes on and on you install any application we also have Siri hey Siri obviously you can talk to Siri also pizza and it's gonna do you know whatever commands you want it's gonna find whatever is nearby and take it to the nearest destination obviously we don't want to go anywhere right now you got all these options you can do calling and CarPlay is a CarPlay in any car so it's not like we have a special CarPlay no matter what car you connected to it's gonna be CarPlay but we give you the ability to have the CarPlay in your Range Rover just like in any 2019 car that comes factory equipped with the Apple CarPlay what's in the box you get the main interface made in USA you got on this side you got HDMI connector for mirroring or any HDMI device you got the update port you got a USB port for charging or if you purchase internal cable for internal module for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto you connect here your iPhone or Android you got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto on the other side you got the video and you got the main connector you get the harness for the main connector you get the microphone for Siri and Apple CarPlay and um, Google Android Auto you get the connection for the microphone you also get the power connection you get two digital cables And you get the cable to do the USB update using Windows or Mac computer. We also recommend buying a additional auxiliary cable, something like this. So RCA to three and a half millimeters. You can insert in the car's auxiliary. We have them available on our site. And you can also purchase long USB if you like. All interfaces must be updated before use. In some cases, if you do not update the interface, the radio will not even turn on. First, click Find Device. Make sure that the interface is connected to your Windows or Mac computer using a USB data cable. Make sure that you have a data cable and not simply a charging cable. If your interface is connected using a data cable and click Find Device, you will have options appear here. This menu indicates that your unit is connected to the computer properly. First, let's select the software. For this demonstration, we will use a 2013 Cadillac CTS as an example. Click search. As you see, there is one software available. Highlight the software by clicking on it and click install. Now we wait for the installation process. Once it's complete, we can move on to step two, which is configure camera or video settings. This process should only take about 30 seconds. Keep in mind we have remote support available up in the top right of the screen. NavTool is able to access your computer and help you along with the process if you're having trouble. When software installation is complete, you will see this screen. Go ahead and click close. Now let's go ahead and move on to step two, which is configure camera settings. The first step, we want to select turn on HDMI wireless CarPlay Android Auto video input. If we have any of these features, we're going to want to select this. On the left side of the screen, we're going to want to select any cameras that were not already equipped in the car. For example, if your car has a factory rear view camera, you do not need to select that. On the right side of the screen, you want to select any factory cameras your car has. For example, if your car came with a factory rear camera, this is where you would select that. So let's say for our demonstrations purposes, our 2013 Cadillac CTS came with a factory rear view camera. However, we installed front, left, and right facing cameras. This is how the configuration should look. Next we scroll down. On the left hand side we have forward facing camera settings. You have two options. The first is manual. This means that the forward facing camera can only be turned on manually by the driver. 
The second option is manual speed check. This option is good for parallel parking. If you put the car in reverse, the rear facing camera will come on. If you put the car back into drive, the front facing camera will automatically turn on at any speed up to 10 miles an hour. On the right hand side you have settings for left and right lane watch cameras. These settings are only for aftermarket cameras that you've added to the car. The first option is manual, which means the cameras can only be activated manually by the driver. The second option is manual without speed check, which means the left and right lane watch cameras can be turned on at any speed. The last option is manual with speed check, which means the left and right lane watch cameras are automatically displayed with the use of the left and right turn signals, and your speed is above 50 miles per hour. When all the settings are complete and correct, go ahead and click Save Settings and then Close. Next you have on-screen display settings. These are the settings of the four camera inputs. This is basically the display name for each of the cameras. You can make it input one or front camera, input two or rear camera, etc. If you're using the basic four cameras, front, back, left, and right, we find it's easier to just leave them as the camera name. Also, deselect all of the options on the left regarding overlay text. Once you're happy with your settings, go ahead and click Save Settings. Feature activation is only available in certain vehicles, so go ahead and disregard it. And that's it, you're finished. Go ahead and disconnect the interface from the computer and proceed with the installation. Interface installation. Whether you have full-size Range Rover or Range Rover Sport installation is identical. The only difference is your navigation DVD ROM location. In the Range Rover Sport and other models, it could be under the driver's seat. In the full-size vehicles, it's going to be in the rear trunk. Open the cover, and after you open the cover, we need to access this DVD ROM drive. Keep in mind, if you have factory DVD player, we also have a video in motion for the cars with factory DVD if you want to use DVD while driving. However, for this installation, Apple CarPlay smartphone mirroring, most of the installation is done at the navigation DVD ROM. You can also do installation, identical installation behind the screen, but this is much easier location and you can easily run the wires to the side. All right, so first we need to remove this. It's easily removed by removing the screws on the side of this unit and the unit comes out. Once you remove the screws, just simply pull it out, give it a little pull, and you have access to all the connectors. Remove all the connectors. Don't worry about it, there is no code in here. We will need access to these wires. Once they're removed, we will need to access this cable and this cable. You can route it through the back for easier work. So once pull them out through the back so you can work on the wires and then you can put them back into the spot where they belong. However, keep in mind that you can also remove this whole panel, but we prefer to do it this way. So we're just gonna snake the wires through the back here into the front and we'll have access to all the wires. So there you go. So it's easier to work on the wires when they're here in the open. Okay, we have access to all the wires. Now, using a blade like this or similar, on this cable here, remove the tape. So you can have access to the wires. In here, you will need only four wires. You need the twisted pair, these are your Ken High and Ken Low wires. And then we need the power and the ground wires. And then this is your digital video line. All right, first wire we want to do is scan high. This is your yellow wire. What you want to do is a few inches from the connector. You want to take the yellow wire and snip it in half. You're going to have two ends of the wire. And you're going to take the supplied harness that we gave you this one and you have two ends of the wire you got the navigation side and you got the car side so here's what you want to do you want to strip the end of the wire and to this end to the connector end after you strip the wire from the supplied harness connect orange wire here's how you want to connect it you want to twist the two wires together 
and then we're going to carve with them with a piece of tape once you twist them together this connection is going to stay there forever you want to take a piece of tape and apply so you take a little bit of electrical tape and you apply the electrical tape when applying electrical tape don't forget to pull on the tape a little bit so when you pull on the tape it's gonna make a very good connection okay once you have this connection done you have the other end of the wire you're gonna strip the end of the other wire and you're gonna do the same thing you're going to connect the yellow wire to the other side of that cut wire so same thing yellow wire and you want to connect them together and then when you connect them together you want to tape them up you can also solder this connection if you like now cut the green wire From the supplied harness, you want to connect green wire together to the connector side. All right, and now you got the other end of the green wire. And you're connecting the white wire to the other side of the green wire. So your CAN wiring is now completed. So it's only two wires, CAN high and CAN low. Okay. And now you have two more wires. You got constant power and ground. Now we need to connect power. Find red wire with green stripe. That's gonna be a constant power. You wanna do a mid strip on the wire, just like that to expose the shield after you strip the wire using something like this like a pick tool you want to make a hole in a wire to make a connection more secure so you make a hole in the wire because it's a multi-strand wire which means there's a multiple strands and you want to insert this red wire in here and twist it around so you insert it into the opening when twisting this wire on be careful you got ground here so be careful not to touch it so this plastic here but here you got metal so make sure not to touch this when doing this particular connection all right and then just apply electrical tape to isolate the connection we prefer using good tape so it stays in all conditions especially if you don't do taping for a living using more expensive tape will make your connections more reliable now you got last wire this is the brown wire this is your ground just strip the wire and again once you strip the wire take something like that be careful not to poke yourself make a hole insert the black wire through the hole twist and apply electrical tape that's it your connections are done if you want you can put more tape on all those connections but before you do that we're going to test everything now we got to do our video signal this cable right here you want to cut it do not cut it too close take a few inches away cut it in half you're going to do this on both sides of the cable you're going to strip this cable carefully remove the shielding you might want to use a blade just give it a little cut through And after you're gonna give it a little cut through, you're going to expose. You're gonna cut off this, you're going to cut off, you don't need this. So when you're left with the shield, you wanna twist the shield together. So twist so all the hairs are separate so the shield is separate now you got it this blue tape you want to remove it also again using this you can cut it off and expose two wires inside so this blue shielding has to come off 
gonna take this blue shielding off all I want to do is want to expose the two wires inside of it so this is the two wires that you need that those are your video signal wires so you got the shields separate and these two wires are separate you can either solder or twist, twist those connections and you're gonna do the same thing on the other end of the wire you have to have shield and two video signals okay and we're gonna attach the supplied wire that you received in a box to this as well we're going to show you how to do this connection and we're gonna start testing the interface so now we're gonna show you the wires that we just cut and removed from the car you got this connector right here we already strip off the ends, isolate it, and what you have here is the red, white, and the shield. Then the supplied cable has brown, purple, and a shield. You want to connect red to purple, and twist them together. You can tape, or because they're so small, we will recommend basically soldering them together. So your first connection is purple to red. Your second connection is red is white to brown and then your last connection are the shields and you're going to do same thing inside the car of the other cut wire since you got two disc cables you're going to connect inside the car to the other end of this cable you're going to connect purple to red brown to white and shield to shield we recommend soldering those wires and eliminating them, isolating them with electrical tape or heat shrink. So you, this is your connection. The wires must be separate, not touching each other. So you can strip more of the wire. And if you solder those connections and tape them off, this connection is going to be as good or even better than the factory connection. So remember, red to purple, white to brown, shield to shield, and go do the same thing on the other wire of the car try to cut off at least an inch or more we recommend at least two inches if you don't do this every day so this way when you have enough cut off you have an excess if something happens here you can strip more of the wire so you're not left with a little bit of wire so basically try to use at least two inches if you don't do this daily for a living this is a very easy connection all right now let's move on to final connection of all the wires in here you're gonna connect your HDMI if you connect anything as far as mirroring Apple CarPlay Android Auto goes in here and in here you could your update once you update you never have to update it again this could be used for USB charging but if you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto this will only be used for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto this is your HDMI input if you have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto do not use this to power up your HDMI devices your microphone connects here and then you run the microphone along the side of the car as, far, and as long as your auxiliary behind the panels and into the location that you choose in the car. You can also buy a USB extension and run the USB extension in HDMI along the panels, under the panels, into the preferred location, either the center console, throughout under the seat or any other location that you prefer to have the connections in a car. Now that you connected these two cables and you got this cable gonna take the main harness and plug it in you can unwind this if you want to up to you plug it in once it's plugged in you have this cable plug in the microphone connection to here this is your audio cables that goes to the auxiliary of the car if you're adding any extra cameras connect them here you got two cables the cable that goes back into the car you're going to connect in here into the other one so this is that goes back into the car in this one you're going to connect the navigation side this cable that goes to the navigation so keep in mind the inside one you got camera so this goes to the screen and this goes back to navigation plug in the main cable and you're done with your installation go to the front press and hold the nav button and make sure the interface activates Thank you for watching. Please click the link on the left to subscribe to the channel or click the link on the right to watch the full video.